Hurling on off the ball. With Board Gosh Energy, proud sponsors of the Senior Hurling Championship. All right, Anthony Nash, good afternoon to you. How are you? Oh, good. How good, Joe? How are you keeping? I'm very well. Um, plenty of things to get our teeth stuck into. Obviously, we're a week out from the, the hurling final in the league. And it's definitely the two best teams in the country. So maybe we get to talk a little bit this week about um, the two teams beating the semis. Uh, there's been a bit of a, I don't know, is it a pylon? Is that, is that um, too hard or too harsh a description of what's going on with uh, the analysis of Cork at the moment? Um, what's your instinct about the truth about where Cork are? Um, I actually, like... Not to bring, like I don't like bringing up all the time, but I did an article there in the Fart Two about it. Like the Cork just I and I said they just need to strike a balance in their forward line. Like we always had a Timmy McCarthy and Niall McCarthy, a Patrick Crone and Aidan Walsh where like Niall probably to the lesser degree where the three lads would have been kind of lambasted from the crowd about not having the silky skills of a Joe Dean, Shawnee McGrath, Ben O'Connor, Patrick Horgan, but we're so instrumental to Cork, like and it's 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 very easy for me as a goalkeeper to to kind of say that they are important because like the boys who slagged me that my my eyes were like a magnet to pack Ronan's white helmet wherever he was my ball was going like but they just need to find someone that can kind of just change up that half hour line to maybe just be that ball winner ball breaker you know um, Shamie Harnady like has fulfilled that role for the last she's nearly decade at this stage you know um, uh, you know with, with Pa and Aiden and stuff like that like, but I just felt the last day we just lack something like that up there where you kind of Declan Dalton Shamie Harnady not available I think Brian Hayes has obviously come into the scene then as well from the footballers, but just trying to find a strike a balance there. And then going back to what I said to you, I think I said it to you there last week as well, of that team on that Sunday, how many of them are going to start in championship? No, Kilkenny had a lot to miss as well, but you didn't have Robbie O'Flynn, Patrick Horgan, Shamie Harnady in your forward lane alone. They're three, not only they're three better forwards, but they're three experienced players in as well. So, I, I look, I, I think it's been a very positive league for Cork. I think that... Um, they've blooded in a lot of young fellas that mightn't be good enough for championship this year no I'm not saying they're going to be thrown in but they've experienced the likes of Eaton Toomey Roaches um, uh, you know and a, a few more than as well like you know um, Cormac O'Brien as well whether they play championship or not is another thing but they've gotten blooded they're after getting a bit of blood maybe for next year but where I see Cork is they're going to go back to 11 or 12 or last year's championship 15 which people in the public mightn't like to hear but that's the way it is they're still the best players in Cork in my eyes one of the things that struck me from the early pieces of analysis that we did was we were talking about the difference in the first and second half against Limerick uh, in the I was it the, one of the first weeks was it even the very yeah, first week first one yeah and yeah. how uh, the perception was that they weren't trying physically in the first half and then in the second half the work rate and intensity went up and it's a it's a switch that got flicked mentally as opposed to and then you were actually no hang on tactically they shifted things around and it's actually easier for the forwards when they're playing a specific role to up the work rate because they're closer to their opponents and so as a function of the tactics the work rate goes up it's not like the work rate went up and so they were therefore better um, and one of the things that the, the team has been accused of is um, you know in the round if you were to put it all together uh, there's a softness in Cork hurling and you know it, it has, it's, yeah. been, it's been said explicitly and it's kind of being hinted yeah. at um, so let's talk a little bit about that um, is the perception totally unfair do they need to add a little bit of steel? Is it a bit of tactical uh, flexibility that is required to allow people to see that that's not the case? What's your What's your take on that whole conversation? Well, yeah, no, no, looks not unfair. It's not totally unfair. No, like, I, uh, um, like this goes back to twelve and thirteen when Jimmy had us, and he used to always say to us, "When we worked hard, we were one of the best teams in the country, and when we didn't, we weren't. We were one of the worst." Like, you know. Um, I think that there has been a level of inconsistency in car curling, you know, over the years. And like, I, I, it's easy for me to say because I was a part of that team as well. Like, I'm not having a, sh a shot at anyone here, and nor am I standing up to mind people either. Like, is it an innate born thing into our game where we just go out and say we're going to hunt in packs and give up our game for our, our own teammates? Maybe that's just not there yet. But like, I do believe Pat is on the right path to that. Um, you know, I think he's starting to look around, see a couple of players that might be like Declan Dalton got more league game time this year than he would have gotten, you know, where he was man of the match against Galway. Uh he worked exceptionally hard. Like Declan wouldn't have the pace that maybe a Shane Kingston or Robbie Flynn has, but he offers something else to it. Um and I think that was one of the main reasons that Pat went after the likes of Brian Hayes to kind of bring in that differential different player that's gonna allow them the the consistency of work ethic and, and work rate like that. Yeah, hasn't been there consistently more than anything. Um, I think it's more the consistency than the softness, I think, is what we would have struggled with over the years where that work rate wasn't always guaranteed with us. Um, why? 
I don't know. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. Um, I always kind of compare Cork and Galway, you know, as a two because teams just always people you say to me like, you know, oh geez, it depends on which Cork turn up, like you know. And it was the same for us. When we played Galway years ago. Like we didn't know which Galway was going to come. If Galway turned up on their day, they'd beat absolutely anyone. Then Mahal had done who's found a kind of a, a consistency in them and showed how good they were by winning in All Ireland, you know. Um, so I don't know. Is it more of a, just a consistency? And I do believe the balance of players in that forward line is going to be important to it going forward. Like where they have to find one or two players that are just going to be willing to give up their game just to work that middle third because that's the way hurling's gone. You can't have six Patrick Corgans, you can't have six Shane Kingston's that can just fly your teams. You need maybe three or four of them plus two guys that are just going to just bring that war to the middle of the field. When you talk about that's the way the game has gone, um, there's definitely much higher scoring now than there has been as well right so this kind of it's, it's all part of the same conversation in, in a strange way in that we're seeing like 130 133 being scored in, in championship and I think it was uh, was it 127 last week these are scores that are slightly higher than a decade ago and that are way higher than two decades ago when you know uh, the, it was the heyday of the man on man in the 90s where mm. Mm. and so I'm just not quite sure that the whole softness thing holds up like these are far superior athletes. They're faster. They're fitter. It. I, 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 there's more space. That's why you get, yeah, see more scores. Like, like the first thing. My very one of my very first articles. Is I don't believe in a soft, a soft hurler. Like I don't believe in the word soft in hurling. Like anybody that gets into county level can't be soft. Like they're going out in the club game, getting absolutely flaked and turning up and scoring one twos, one threes against their club. They're going out to the county level against the best physical specimen in, in the game and getting tumped around the place. If you're soft, you don't make that. You know, you don't make that. What I what I consider is just the consistency of willing to give up your 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 own game, not giving a shit whether you get two or three points yourself and just saying, right, but my teammate will. Like, I, I'll go back to it again and I don't want us to fall into the limerick trap of a conversation again, but like, Tom Morrissey and Garrod Hegarty, right? I, I, and, and even Graham O'Connor, I don't believe they're being judged on scores. The reason they get scores is they're so busy around the fields that the ball comes to them. They have fantastic ability. But their main thing there is you protect midfield. Will O'Donoghue, who's probably their most selfless player, just protects Declan Hannon. And then all of a sudden, the Galans, the Flanagans and all these do it. For me, I don't know, have we found enough of those in Cork yet? Um, and some other counties mightn't have it either, where we have two or three lads that are willing to just say, like for me in 17, 18, Dan Carney and Luke Mead were that for us. So people in Cork mightn't have seen that, like, but they come off the field after 55, 60 minutes, and we realised they'd be after running 12k. Now, they mightn't have scored, but they were coming back to help us, to protect our defence, to link the play going forward. And all of a sudden in 17 and 18, we were going well with them, you know, but they were two of the most important players we had because... Their job was to come back the field, help the midfield and help the help the defence out. And they were willing to do so without any judgment of scoring. I, I, I and I think that's all part of the same thing as well, where you you want to be able to point to so it's, some analysts want to be able to point to or, or supporters want to be able to point to, you know, you got in their faces and you physically rattled them. But actually that's not really the game anymore. You've got to stop your opposition scoring 34, 35 times. And that means closing space as opposed to like being able to shoulder them once and they're like okay great 100% that's it so like that's like that's the thing at the moment like when when like people that are doing stats like define a tackle does tackle just mean contact or does tackle mean you're changing the angle of the man's run by just being in that space like you know, I talked to Brian Murphy a lot, like, and he always said to me, defending is about probability and max, like reducing that 70% shot to a 50% shot. It might go over five times out of 10, but those other two times it mightn't go over. Like, if you go and try and get the, the Hail Mary shoulder, right? They're so athletic nowadays, they're going to step you and you're gone. So, like, it's actually slowing the momentum down, turning them back, making them make that extra play. Now, fellas might be listening in, I know it's all about contact. It is, you'll get one out of 100 and you'll put him into the stand. But the other 99 times, he's going to skip past you and you're going to be out of the play. So, like, it's all about actually cutting down the space. Like, like I, I, you see Waterford at the moment are just giving everything to that middle third. Like, they're just giving everything. They're sacrificing the Desi Hutchinsons. They're doing all this, bringing them all out to win that middle third to get the front foot running, hand pass and shoot from distance. Like, if you look on average, I'd love if you could see the average. Like, I think 30 points, you hit the nail in the head. Limerick seem to aim for 30 points every game. And if another team get 30 points or more, fair play to you. Majority of those are coming from the middle third where they're walking the ball and taking shots from distance because they're going to win it back around again. But what they're very good at is cutting out space and when the ball lands, having a body there to get contact. 
You know, it doesn't matter who, it could be anybody. But when you're making a run, then, then you have to make a decision. And we experienced that with, so Liberty's, uh, well, last year, no, against Navirshig. Every time one of our players got the ball, he got met. You know, it mightn't have dispossessed him, but it sent him back to make a second decision. And and that's where their tactics have set up the ability for their defence exactly. to meet you physically, exactly. as opposed to just exactly. deciding that they're going to be physical. Today, we're going to be physical. As exactly. Well. How do we catch him if he's if the, their plan is better than our plan? I can't catch him. At any one time, Limerick have eleven or twelve players in their own half. Do you know what I mean? Like an Aaron Galan, Seamus Flanagan, or the focal points of attack with Peter Casey or whoever is up there. Like you know, Keane Lynch, Gerard Hegarty, and Tom Morrissey. As soon as that ball is thrown in, they're back in the midfield. So next thing you turn, you're bound to have some Limerick player in your face. Like you know, like that's what Waterford are trying to to implement as well. That every time you turn, you turn into a Waterford player. Like you know, um, the only problem is, is that. I believe they're selecting the wrong players to do that um, and putting the correct players in the wrong position, you know. OK, well, let's talk about Waterford then since you brought them up. Does that mean that actually that's more fixable than most people are are saying at the moment? Because they've definitely been written off. Like when we're talking about who's going to come out of Munster, I haven't seen anybody yet say, yeah, it's going to be yeah. Limerick and I'm penciling in Waterford to come out. Yeah, no. I look. I, I think it's Limerick plus four. Any three, of the, any other ones of the four is what people are saying. Like, but I, I think if if Davy just sits back and has a look at the strengths of their players, like I know it's been hampered around on Twitter a lot. Like, but like Daisy Hutchinson's best position is inside in front of the square, side to side running, lateral running, where he tires out a defender. Like you know, because he's so fit and willing. Bennett's the same, and then you've got the likes of Mikey Kiley, who he who we had with UL, who are just goal threats. Like you know, and I, I think he'd be the next. You know, Dan Shanahan and Kelly John Milan for Waterford because he's just a typical goal scorer, like, you know. And yes, you look at the team the last few games, and Daisy Hutchinson is the guy out in the middle of the field winning the ball. No, what Davey's asking his wing forward to do, I have no problem with. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not arguing with that. You're sending him back to the field. But to me, when you've got, uh, as yourself and Shane would define, a world class striker, <laughs> you know, in your, in your team, why are you sending him out to the wing, out to the middle of the field to win the dirty ball, to hit it into where he should be? Well, let me posit one thing, right? Davey, obviously, uh, depending on who you listen to, is is a very qualified manager with loads of experience. He must know what he's doing. He yeah. must. Is there an element of this where... So I actually used to do this thing, and Burkamp wrote about it in his book, where they made him play right back for a load of games after he'd kind of emerged as a, a brilliant young striker. And he was like, what are you doing? He's like, we're teaching you so that when you look up, you know what the right back is thinking. And we're, we're giving you a deeper understanding of where everybody is on the field when you're making your run as a striker don't worry we, we're going to put you back there like when the when the championship happens do you expect those players who have been doing that work to now be in their right positions and to have a better understanding of what's going to happen and what ball is coming into them yeah I, I, like to be honest like he's the kind of character you just don't know what's going to happen like and that's why I think that like for all the people that hate him out there like I think he's brilliant for the game like because you know he brings he brings an attraction to the game, like but like I think if Waterford are to be successful, whether he's trying it or not trying it, you have to have Desi Hutchinson inside with Bennett, like and you have to for me, you have to have Mikey Kylie around him. But you know, I, I just can't see it working. I like I just hope he's not just going to be stubborn enough to leave it out there and hope it works. Um because as you said there a second ago, while you need to stop teams from scoring, you also need to put thirty points up on the board yourself. So like you're taking Desi Hutchinson, who who I consider one of the best inside forwards in the country, right? I don't think he's got that Parik O'Mahony 70-yard strike over the bar as accurate. But, like, I don't judge Daisy Hutchinson against Parik O'Mahony because they're two separate players for Bally Gunner. You know what I'm saying? So, like, while like while you have the headache of Parik O'Mahony who gets the ball 70 yards out, you're thinking, oh, shit, this could be over the crossbar. Daisy Hutchinson, to me, is more of a, he's going to run at you, he's going to get a 30-yard point, or he's going to go through on goal. Like So, whether he does it, whether he's trying that, it, like you know what, it could very well be with, with Davy doing that because Desi knows how to play inside anyway. They went away in their training camp. They're going to play a couple of challenge matches. They could revert back into those positions. Um, but I think for Watford to be a success, he needs to get that team right. Like To be fair, right, if you look at them physically, age-wise and hurling-wise, up until a year ago, were they closest to Limerick? Like with the demographic of the team, you know, I, I think they're probably up there. You know, as the best of the rest, you know, with Kilkenny and like, you know, uh, but then obviously the championship last year and the whole blow up with, with, um, with Liam Cahill. Like, but I still look at them and you still have tied the Borka. Trying to find Austin Gleason's best position, I still think is, 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 is the thing for me. And then you've got like Bennett and Daddy Hutchinson who are two of the inside on top of Caleb Lyons, Jamie Barron. Like, you're, you're naming some of the best hurlers in the country. So I still think that they're going to be a team that are going to be hard to beat in Munster. Yeah. 
And I, I think that we've kind of um, forgotten that there was at least one good game before the uh, the team started to leak and all, all the rest of the, the circus that um, bubbled up around the team last year. So it wasn't like the league was the end of their good performances. Um, uh-huh. You know, I, I, obviously something else happened. It wasn't just that they uh, they went too strong in the league. Um, to 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 just to finish up on that, then they're about as under the radar as it's possible to be for a team who's managed by mm-hmm. David Fitzgerald. Like <laughs> it's remarkable. <laughs> That's it. like you know, it's look again. Like oh, my family are from Limerick and Clare, and Limerick obviously had a huge rivalry. Like you know, and and I know like what what um. You know what the like? Look, he's like, is it Marmite? Is that the thing? You either are Bovril or whatever. Like, you know, you either love him or you hate him. Like, but like, you can't be under the radar with Davy anyway. That's number one. You, you like, I don't think you can. Um, but I still think that they're a good a good team going forward. Like, you can't write those talented players off. Like, you just can't. Like, you can't. He'll get those players back. Like, I'm after naming a handful. I'm after thinking of the dailies, you know. I'm after thinking of, you know, a few more, like, that have still to, to perform, like, you know. So, like, people are, let people write them off at their peril. Like, I don't think that Waterford are out uh, as bad as people think. And I think come championship, they're not going to be a nice team to play against. And as I said to you, I think it was last week before, a team that doesn't work against them are going to be annihilated. They'll run up a cricket score against a team that don't match them in the middle third. Limerick can and Kilkenny can on a consistent basis and Tipperary obviously showed that they did it's up to the rest of the team seeking a match them in the middle third first We did start out talking about Cork there and ended up talking about Waterford yeah. um, I don't know if that was on purpose I was trying to deflect you or I was trying I was, to deflect as you can gather I don't know did you get my I was, <laughs> I was going to say um, <laughs> so uh, Cork are relatively happy with where the league went and not too pissed off about the fact that they didn't physically attack Kilkenny in Nolan Park Oh, listen, Pat's going to be disappointed with the way they played on the day. Like, but again, it's going to go back to the frustration that Cork Public have, which I don't agree with. You're going to end up with ten or eleven of last year's team starting, if not more. That's it. Like, and we didn't have, you didn't have those. Like, Sean O'Donoghue was a huge loss. Um, Damien Callan's only coming back into it. Uh, Owen Downey, you know, who's going to be a huge loss for the first game if his suspension holds up. But like, you, Robbie O'Flynn, Seamus Harney, Patrick Corgan. To me, I, I know people have their debates about Hoggy. You know, at the moment, to me, he's a guaranteed starter. He's a free taker, um, and still one of the best forwards that. that I'd still say one of the best forwards in the country um, and it's not to my friendship so you've got three of your most important like Robbie O'Flynn before his injury was probably Cork's most form player in the league and Sham Shammy Harandy is our outlet ball like he's the guy that does the, the, the fighting and the winning of the ball and when he came on against Wexford he turned that game and then you have to decide whether you go with a Declan Dalton or do you go with another like you know like Shane Kingston will probably be there do you go with a kind of a like for me you Jack O'Connor you had Shane Kings, you had a lot of similar like players playing against Kilkenny the last year, and I just don't think we can go with six similar like players, uh, uh, you know, going out in championship. Like you need to have two or three different lads that are going to do two or three different, two or three different roles. And I guarantee you, when it comes to championship, Pat will have that. I have huge faith in him, um, as do the Cork public. But a, a league in the whole, I think, successful because Cork had a lot of injuries going through it. Bit of a disappointment at the end, but it, it's a far better place than they were last year when they got annihilated in the league final. Yeah, um, against Waterford, like do you know, so like let's let's not throw the baby out with the bat water. Go up to Nolan Park against a, a very good Kilkenny team, you know, who who you're rightly saying are second in Ireland at the moment. Yeah, and actually, you know, the two league games against Kilkenny, if you take them, obviously there's a, a, a gap between them, but uh, it's roughly even. So I think they'd have taken that at the start of the campaign, and they obviously know a lot more about the strength and depth. To talk about Kilkenny briefly, right? I I, I definitely felt after the first game against Tip when they got their first win in Nolan Park since the arc, everybody was like, ooh what's going to happen here but like it's a very steady hand on the tiller it's a slight improvement in terms of um, malleability of the game plan and it's the same characters with some players playing even better than they were under Cody it feels like this transition from the managerial uh, you know era of Cody to Derek Ling has been seamless so far yeah it's been brilliant they're like rightly so it'll be int- like it's a great league final you know, it's a, it's a great league final to be looking forward to because it lets us know in championship where we are. Like like last year, I fell into, and I said it to you, I fell into that whole thing of, of Leinster hurling versus Munster hurling because Munster hurling is more competitive. But Kilkenny are um, Kilkenny are, are, are next in the throne, right? Like, you know, and, and rightly so until someone comes along and knocks them off. Currently, they're the, the team that you guarantee to come out of Leinster winning it. Um, and then, like, you have the likes. Like, it's funny, like, you know, we played the Kilkenny 20s in a challenge match and beforehand I met Owen Murphy um, Hugh Lawler was coming out and TJ Reid after doing their running like you know and you're kind of thinking Jesus you know these guys some of these guys still have to come back into that team that are going well they're after finding Billy Drennan I know they found him already like but 
there's another addition to that forward line of an Adrian Mullen and Cody, TJ Reid, uh, Massey Keown and stuff like that. So, you know, and Walter Walsh is a hand injury. Like, Jesus Christ, they're still they're still household names and they're still going well. And do you know what? I think the, look, no doubt about it, Brian Cody is one of the greatest of all time. There's absolutely nothing and nothing is. But I think that freshness up there, those players might be a little bit excited. You know, they might be, you know, you know, really looking forward to see what they can do under under a younger manager, I suppose, without, without you know. And, and the one thing about him, it's not that he's gone and said, right, what Cody was doing, we're throwing away. Against Waterford, I saw a couple of sharp puckouts and they tried to work him out. And next thing I saw Ling run down the sideline and point his finger to the foot forward. In other words, when you get that ball, hoof it, you know. And next thing they broke one or two and got a few great scores out of it. So it's like he's trying to get a good mix like of still retaining the Kilkenny hurling where you win your own ball while mixing the ability to work it through midfield when teams play sweepers against them. So so far, so good, I'd say anyway. Yeah. Um, Tipperary, how will they feel? Like it was, it wasn't quite death by a thousand cuts from uh, the Limerick match. It was definitely a game where they stood up for a period of time but seemed to like everybody does against Limerick, eventually just get exhausted and picked off. Um, so so I don't, is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's like, oh, you go for a period of time, but actually you, you can't see it through because it's just Limerick and they're irresistible. Yeah, like in the article I wrote there, I was on about Barry Hogan's performance for me, I thought was one of the standout performances of the weekend because I thought he was intelligent enough to go short and go long and brave enough to go short and long. And I think against Limerick, your puckouts have to be impeccable. And people are going to come along and think it's a go. It's not, it's your possessions. Like Limerick thrive in opposition's puckouts. And I thought Barry Hogan's puckouts, allied with the ability of the Tipperary players to hold on to him in tough positions, um, really started the, the, the their way to, to going in at half time in the lead. Like, but... What what he's done, what I think Liam Cattle has done, right, is if you ask any Tipperary person, how are you this year versus last year? I think there is like, you know, gap between the two, like, which is huge. But he's found hurlers, like, you know, like Brian O'Mara can receive a sharp puck out and ping a ball out. You know what I mean? You've Ron O'Mara. I think he's starting to get a nice little structure in that team. Um, what they need to find is something, as you said, to push them on. But like, like oh, here we are, right? We're taking our focus off Limerick, right? Which we should be for now. So should every other team in Munster. So should every team in Leinster, bar Kilkenny. Kilkenny are the only team playing them next now, you know? And then, like, I know Waterford to come back and play them championship, but we're here going, like, would Tipperary's performance the last day have been good enough to beat every other team in the country? Potentially, yeah. Do you know? And that's what they need to look at. Their first half performance was brilliant. How can we lengthen that now for 45 minutes? How can we make that for 50 minutes? And even still, those 70 minutes... Oh, have we lost you there? Oh, sorry, one second. No, yeah, sorry, no. yeah, you're back. Yeah, you're back again, yeah, sorry. You were asking, yeah, so that's a, an excellent point, right? Because sometimes an inferior team puts it up to a supposedly superior team and you last, you know, half the game into the second half and eventually you get picked off. Um, it doesn't always happen that way. But how do you lengthen that performance? How do you make sure that, like, is it is it fatigue? Is it physical fatigue? Is it mental fatigue that Limerick gets you with in the end? A bench. I think it's a bench. I, I think that's what you probably need to look at finding now, like guys that are going to come in and just keep that energy going, you know. And I think some of those starters, the last they might start championship Tipperary, but might come in and finish it off. I think that's what Limerick have like. And and at half time, you know, Limerick are going to try and tweak something like so. Like in the piece I wrote, like it was on about, you don't need just tactical puckouts. You also need someone that is a note ball that might, you know, help you when Limerick that running you for a long puckout that you get the breaks. But for me, it's just finding twenty players that are willing to come on and you know, continue what you're asking them to do at the same energy level because Limerick will. Limerick have those five players that will come in and will bring that energy as well, like, you know. Um, but again, against other teams, as I said to you there, like, I, I, before I got cut off there, was, like, their performance for me was was just going, oh, wow, tip her back. Tip her back with a bang, like, you know. So I, I really, really, last year, I would have said, I thought Tipperary were gone from Munster before it even started. No, Munster is an absolute minefield. Like everyone assumes Limerick will get out, like, but Tipperary's performance the last day showed that it would take a hell of a team to beat them, which it did. It took Limerick at their best second half performance to beat them. Um, but I think for me, it's finding those 20 players that are willing to just come in and continue that, you know. And that's why I think the league has become very important for Liam Cahill, Pat Ryan, uh, Ling, and all them. They found these young fellas, you know, they found these new players that may not start in championship but start with a lot of the league that they know now they can trust by throwing into championship with 15-20 minutes to go uh, Is it possible some of them do start in championship at least for the first week the first match and that they're given an opportunity to bounce or is there enough time between now and the first round of championship for 
the you know what everybody assumes will be the starters, the experienced fellas to get their place back. Yeah, like I like I look at it there. You've the likes of like Tipperary, Garrod O'Connor for me is a fine. Like I, I I would have obviously come across him with you well, and I've said that a lot. He starts for me like at centre forward and stuff as well. And maybe it's the likes of Bonner Maher that comes in instead of starting. You know, maybe it's that kind of a guy that comes in, or a Seamus Callanan who might come back from injury might come in. Um, you know, but I think like every manager is going to try and put out his best fifteen. What he what he values over the league for us in Cork, I think it is important that the likes of Seamus Harrandy, Patrick Horgan, and Robbie O'Flynn start. Because they need to remain in games, you know, and and get their foothold for for uh, you know, and then you have maybe a couple of the more leggier players like the Conor Callans, Jack O'Connors, whatever like that, that might unfortunately find themselves in that super sub role, like you know, but but in Tipperary, like I think that what what he's done very well and what I liked about Tipperary is he's found a mixture of those older players allied with the younger players, like, like Jake Morris has become very consistent, um, Gerard O'Connor has become a great find at St. Fortin. Now you've got Jason Ford, Noel McGrath. You know, even Bonner Maher thrown in around him. Like, that's a nice mix of a front eight there, you know. Um, and I think that's what they were lacking for the last year or two when they didn't have those young fellas playing with them. Yeah. I have one last one for you. Is it important for Kilkenny to yep. beat Limerick now or does it matter? Do they just need to get close to them and go, OK, that's the level, that's the standard. We, we knew we were close to them last year. We know we're close to them now. It doesn't really matter. Or is there a psychological element to actually getting one over them, on them in a, a game like a league final where there's a, a bit of, of, of um, silverware to be won? Like, does it matter when it comes to them meeting again later in the year if they do? It's a funny question, isn't it? Like, because you're asking a team that we're, we were all trying to beat and get an, a psychological edge over in Kilkenny in the mid noughties or the late, you know what I mean? And now they're the team that are thinking they might need to do so. Um, I think if if we're going along what Brian Cody would have thought of over the last few years and what any Kilkenny person looked at over the years, it's a league final. You know, they want to win a league final. Like, you know, whether whether they care about getting a psychological edge over Limerick, like the one thing Kilkenny have and they'll look at is the next time they want to meet Limerick will be an all or the final. You know, so like whether that psychological edge is there to be long forgotten for me anyway, as a player, like you're going straight into a new league, an all or the final. I think what they want right now, and especially for Derek Ling, will be the fact that they'd love a title under him straight away. And it's just like he's already done it. He's already shown these players that he knows what he's doing. They can trust in his system. They can do everything. But just to cap it off with a league, uh, a league title, the only thing I think that can happen negatively here, and I don't see it happening, is Limerick trouncing a Kilkenny. Like like Waterford Cork last year. Waterford put Cork back right, and in the first round of championship, Limerick put Cork back again. You know the net, the last two competitive games, and then it sends doubt into your game plan. Then you're coming back to training, going, "Oh sugar, do we need to change things?" Do we change players? Like with Kilkenny, I think the most important thing, first of all, is they get performances and experience, but they'll be going to win a league final. Whether it's a psychological edge going forward, I don't I don't know, because the next time they'll potentially meet it's July, you know. Um but I think it's the perfect league final for for spectators and for for outsiders because it's gonna be one intense feisty game the two I suppose last kingpins of the game meeting. Um but again, like I said at the last day about Tipperary. I said, I hope Tipperary people don't get me wrong. I think that they're in a great position, but I think Limerick will have too much room and I'm going to say the same thing for the league final. All right. Anthony, good stuff. Thanks a million for joining us. Cheers. Great stuff. Thanks for your sound. Hurling and off the ball is all with thanks to Borgosh Energy, proud sponsors of the Senior Hurling Championship and Legends Tour Series taking place in Croke Park. Hurling on off the ball with Borgosh Energy, proud sponsors of the Senior Hurling Championship.